deductive reasoning, that is going to be when you use laws of logic in order to reach a conclusion, or you use your laws of logic in order to determine if a conclusion is valid. Okay, so we want to have that definition in our notes. The question is, what is a logic law? Well, there are two. One is the law of detachment, and the other is called the law of syllogism. And these are two laws that have to be memorized, and you have to be able to identify them in a sequence of um, hypotheses and conclusions in order to determine if that series of hypotheses and conclusions actually makes sense. So the first one we're going to address is the law of detachment. Remember, you do have to have these memorized. Law of detachment is going to have a hypothesis and a conclusion. So how do we represent a hypothesis and a, and a conclusion? Well, we do that with our P's and Q's. Okay, so you're always going to be looking at some type of conditional statement. You're going to be given a P and then a Q. Then they're going to take that first P, that hypothesis, and it's going to come back up again. So the sentence that follows will address your original hypothesis. From that, you will conclude that Q is true. It has to be in this exact order, and you usually will be either coming up with a conclusion or you will be asked if the conclusion is true based on the following. So let's actually look at this and what it, what it is in an example. Okay, don't worry about this side over here. There we go. Okay, so let's look at the first example. We're going to determine the conclusion using the law of detachment. So we're looking for this pattern here. First statement, if you are in Alaska, so anytime we address being in Alaska, that's going to be our P. Then there is no billboard advertising. So anytime we talk about there not being billboard advertising allowed, then we're referring to our Q. So our first set of statements is our conditional, and that's always P, then Q. Alright, Teresa is in Anchorage. Is that addressing somebody being in Alaska? Well, hopefully you know that Anchorage is in Alaska. <laughs> so yes, it's talking and referring to someone that is in Alaska. Teresa is in Anchorage, and Anchorage is in Alaska. So we have addressed our P again. Now this is the part that's kind of confusing for a lot of you because you're like, well, it doesn't say Alaska, and you doesn't mean Teresa. You means, you know, me. But it's the idea of our hypothesis. The idea of being in Alaska is always going to be P. And we know that Anchorage is in Alaska, so that is our P. Okay, so now, what is the conclusion? We'll look up here, our law of detachment. You're going to be given your P, then Q, check. You're given a P again. Check. Your conclusion should be Q. Now we're not just writing out then there is no billboard advertising. We now have to make it relevant to this P. So when we write our conclusion we need to address Teresa. Okay, so the conclusion is our Q but now it has to be relevant to our original, or, or this hypothesis here, but about Teresa being in Anchorage. So Teresa will not see any billboard advertising. That's our cue. Alright, let's look at the next example. Okay, it says if a pet is a dog, so anytime you have a pet that is a dog, it's our P. Then it chases squirrels, so that is our conclusion. Anytime we talk about a dog chasing squirrels or a pet chasing squirrels. That's our cue. Alright, so the next statement says, my pet chases squirrels. Just because it has the word pet in it doesn't mean it's our P. The idea of chasing squirrels, that's the main idea. That is Q. So this statement here, my pet chases squirrels, is a reference to Q, the conclusion. Now look up here, law of detachment says it has to go P then Q, P first, then we can conclude Q. This one says P then Q, Q first. So right here where it says conclusion, you get to say no valid conclusion. 
or to abbreviate, you could say, you know, not applicable, or, you know, something that tells me that you know, based on these series of, of um, lettering, that there is no valid conclusion. All right, you're on your own in the next, um, next one. Determine whether a conclusion is valid. So go ahead. This time they're going to give you the conclusion. You just have to determine if it follows the law of detachment right here. All right, give it a shot. Pause your video. Okay, so you should have said that, yes, this is a valid conclusion because of law of detachment. Now, I know it doesn't ask you for the law, but later on we're going to get into asking for the law. So you just get used to, to being able to say that was a law of detachment. All right, number four, same thing as number three. Identify the letters, PQ, PQ, and then identify whether or not the conclusion given is valid based on the law of detachment. Go ahead and pause your video, and then make sure your answer matches up with mine. Okay, so number being divisible by 10, that's P. The number divisible by 5, that's Q. 20 is a number that is divisible by 10. That was our P. 20 is divisible by 5, that was our Q. So yes, it goes in the exact order of the law of detachment. P then Q, P then Q. Q. All right, last one, number five, and then we'll move on to the law of syllogism. Okay, so number five should have been not valid. We have Scott, a student at 17, that's P. He or she may drive, that's Q. Well, we talk about a student, Scott, driving to school today. That driving to school, or anybody driving, is a reference to Q. Scott is 17, that's a reference to P. So this does not go PQPQ, Q, so it is not a valid conclusion. All right, let's address the law of syllogism. Once again, it's a logic law that you have to memorize the order of the letters, and we're going to utilize it the same way we just did with attachment. Okay, this one, both logic laws always start the same. You're going to have your uh, conditional statement, your P then Q. Okay, but this time... The next, set of, the next set of statements will be another conditional that's going to address Q, and then it's going to bring up a whole new idea, which we're going to call R. Okay, so you're going to have another conditional that reads, if Q, then R. And then you're going to have a conclusion again, and the conclusion is going to be just like the law of, or the transitive property in algebra. If you remember the transitive property, you have a P, then a Q, and you're given Q again, and a new statement R, excuse the sloppiness. The two middle terms are going to go away, and you're going to be left with P, then R. Okay, so if you notice, your conclusion is going to be your P, and then your R. Those two middle Qs kind of go away or disappear. Okay, so let's look at number one, example one. And one of the things that I've heard in the past students say is, oh, well, if the set of statements is really, really long, and there's a lot more words, then it's probably a lot of syllogism. Don't always go by that. Just because it's long and lengthy, because detachment, we see it's very short here. And this is very long and lengthy. Don't always go by that. You have to underline and identify P's, Q's, and R's. All right, so number one, if the groundhog sees his shadow, so anytime we talk about a groundhog seeing his shadow, we're referring to P, then he will go back into his burrow. So that's going to be Q. Anytime we talk about something going inside of its burrow, that's Q. If the groundhog goes back into its burrow, going back into your burrow, that was Q, then we will have six more weeks of winter. Now, we haven't talked about six weeks of winter anywhere in the previous set of statements. That's why we have to address this as a new idea, and that new idea we call R. So now, look at your law of syllogism up here. P, Q, Q, R. Q's go away, and you're left with P, then R. So we're going to be left with the first part of this conditional, if the groundhog sees his shadow, then the last part of this conditional, we will have six more weeks of winter. So our conclusion should be P, then R. Okay, 
Okay, so your final conclusion should be if the groundhog sees his shadow, that was P, then we will have six more weeks of winter. All right, let's look at number two. If it is Tuesday, so anytime we talk about Tuesday, we're referring to P. Then Daryl works at Farm Fresh. So anytime we address somebody working at Farm Fresh, it doesn't have to be Daryl. It just has to be someone that works at Farm Fresh. Well, actually, in this case, if it's Tuesday, Daryl working at Farm Fresh, we do want to address that it's Daryl. <laughs> All right, so anytime we talk about Daryl working at Farm Fresh, then that's Q. All right, if Daryl works at Farm Fresh, that was Q again. Then he drinks a latte from Starbucks. We have not addressed drinking a latte from Starbucks. So because we have not addressed that idea yet, we need to give it a new letter, R. So we have followed the sequence, P then Q, Q then R. Remember our Qs go away. So we should have the first part of our original conditional, if it is Tuesday, and then the last part of our second conditional, then he drinks a latte from Starbucks. Now, remember what I said about Conditionals making sense. If it is Tuesday, then he drinks a latte from Starbucks. Do we know who he is? If you just said that sentence to your mother. Hey mom, it's Tuesday. He drinks a latte from Starbucks. Does she have any idea who you're talking about? And the answer is no. So you have to bring back who he is because it makes sense. Okay, so if it is Tuesday, then Daryl drinks a latte from Starbucks. So that's our Q, or sorry, that's our P and then our R. And how much did Daryl drink? He drank a latte. hey -oh. All right, number three, I want you to go ahead and determine if the conclusion provided is valid. So you're going to identify P's, Q's, Q's, and R's, and make sure it matches this series of letters. If it doesn't, then the conclusion is not valid. Go ahead and pause your video and take a second to work on number three. Okay? And you should have said that, yes, it was valid because of the law of syllogism. Snowing today is P. Wearing your wool socks, or she wearing that person wearing their wool socks, is Q. Wearing my wool socks, that's Q again. My feet itching, that's a whole new idea we haven't talked about yet, so we call it R. Then we conclude our P first if it snows today. Then our R, my feet will itch. That's valid because it follows the logic law of syllogism. All right, number four, take a second, pause the video, and let's determine if the conclusion is valid. Okay, and you should have said that this is not valid. Eric getting arrested, that's our P. Going to jail is our Q. Eric robbed a bank. Well, we haven't talked about robbing a bank yet, so we give that a new letter, R. It's a new idea. Then he will get arrested. Getting arrested, Eric getting arrested, that was P. Well, right there, you could have stopped. Because right there, PQRP, that does not follow either one of our logic laws. So at that point, you can stop and say not valid. But just to get in good practice, we want to identify all the letters and make sure we're, we're positive. So if Eric gets arrested, that's P, he will, then he will rob the bank, that's R. So the final part, P then R, that followed our conclusion based on the law of syllogism. But the middle part, that R then P, that should have been Q then R. So based on that, it's not valid. All right, try number five. Go ahead and take, take a second and pause the video. All right, and this one was valid based off of the law of syllogism. P was getting, Jake getting a job. Q was affording a car. Jake can afford a car. That's Q again. P will drive to school. That's a whole new idea we haven't addressed yet, so we designate it as an R. Conclusion, if Jake gets a job, then he will drive to school. That was P, getting a job, driving to school, R. The Qs went away, and we were left with P then R. So that is valid based on the law of syllogism. Okay, so when you start to do your practice on this, it's important that you remember you have to use, in sequence, Ps, Qs, and Rs. If necessary, I guess you can go on to S, T, and U, but I don't think that's ever going to occur. But always start with Ps, Qs, and Rs. When you go to take your exit quiz, Instead of writing law of detachment or law of syllogism, you're probably going to just have to write a D or an S because spelling is very difficult for these words. I see it a problem all the time. So the type of exit quiz and quiz that you're going to be taking is going to look a lot like this, and then the 
and then a couple on the on that we do in a little bit. So try number one. Take a second, pause the video. And the only thing that's a little bit different is right now, instead of just saying valid yes or no, you need to tell me what law it is. Okay. So you will always have, not always, but most of the time you're going to be asked to identify it, each conditional symbolically. So you're always using your P's and your Q's. So your answer should look like this. P then Q, given P, include Q, this law followed the law of detachment. Now, if you got this wrong, it's probably because of statement two. Jill broke a vase in Potter's gift shop. Well, our original P said nothing about Jill, and it said nothing about Potter's gift shop. But let's think about this using our brains here. If someone breaks an item in a store, it's like saying if someone breaks the law, they go to jail, right? Well, if Johnny was speeding, isn't that breaking the law? So we are referring to somebody breaking an item in a store. Breaking someone, Jill, breaking an item, a vase, in the store, the gift shop. So all of that is just a reference to P. We haven't introduced any new main idea. Now if we said Jill threw a vase in the gift shop, we can't assume that it broke, and we can't assume that that's P. So then, yeah, we would address that as a new subject, new idea, new thought. So now Jill must pay for the the vase. Instead of you, we address Jill. Alright, let's try the next one. Same way. We want this, our symbolic statements, and then we want the law. Okay, so yes, this ended up being a valid conclusion based on the law of syllogism. So let's just go back and look at it real quick. Fossil fuels being burned, that's P. Acid rain is produced, that's Q. Acid rain is produced, that's Q again. And wildlife suffering. We have not addressed wildlife suffering yet. So we're going to give it a new letter R. Fossil fuels are burned. We already talked about that. That was our P. Wildlife suffering. We've already talked about that. That was our R. Go back up to your law of syllogism. P, Q, Q, R. Q's go away. Boom, boom. Then we're left with Q and R. So that is syllogism. All right, go ahead and try number three. This one is a little bit different because we haven't really talked about symbols yet in geometry. We're going to get into that. But just so you know, this M angle, this M symbol A, that reads the measure of angle A. So when you see that, replace it with the measure of angle A. Okay, so off to the right here, I wrote down what that, how that actually reads. Um, so go ahead and try number three, and pause the video, and let's see if we get the same answer. Okay, so we should have had P then Q, P, and then opposite of Q. Ah, the opposite, the tilde, it makes a comeback in this lesson. That's a good thing, and that's okay. The opposite of Q. So does the law of detachment, this kind of looks like the law of detachment, but this law of attachment, detachment have the opposite of anything in there? No, the law of detachment just says P, Q, P, Q. Does not address the opposite of Q. So this is not a valid conclusion, and one of the things that always cracks me up is when I have this blank here for law, students will still write, oh, law of detachment. If it's not valid, you better not have a law here. Because the logic laws validify or validate, that's a better word. <laughs> I made that last word up. Validate your conclusions. So if it's not valid, there should be no law in your answer. And that will come up again as a little trick. And a lot of you will fall, not a lot of you, but some of you will fall for it. So be careful with that. Okay, so now we're going to skip over the next one and look at number five. Determine if it's possible to write a conclusion. So remember, if, the, if these two conditionals or these two statements follow one of your logic laws, then a conclusion will be valid, and you're going to have to write that conclusion. And then remember, if it's not a valid conclusion, then you won't have a logic law. So go ahead and pause the video, see what you come up with. Okay, so I have somebody racing in the Indianapolis 500, that's P. That person is a professional racer, that's Q. Bobby Rahal, I don't know if that's how you say it, has raced in the Indianapolis 500. Well, that is someone who has raced in the Indianapolis 500. So, Bobby Rahal, that's our P. 
So we're following the law of detachment, P, Q, P. What comes next? Q. Bobby Rahal, Rahal I guess, I don't know. <laughs> He's a professional racer. Law of detachment. All right, now we're going to look at number seven. We're going to skip down a little bit to number seven. And let's see if we can take a multiple choice question and um, apply it to detachment or syllogism. So, based on the following statements, which of these statements is a valid conclusion or must be true? That's just another way of saying a valid conclusion. So we're going to identify P's, Q's, Q's, and R's and see which one of these, A, B, C, and D, or E, would be the valid conclusion. Pause the video and see what you think. All right, and that one was a little bit tricky because your, your first intuition is to make Brandon playing football and to assume that he's that makes him someone who gets paid. But we don't know that Brandon playing football is making him any money. All we know is that he plays football. So we do know he's an athlete. We do know that that part's a little bit true. But we don't know if he gets paid. So we can't put this down as P. So unfortunately, even though it's tempting to put it down as P, it's a new idea that we haven't talked about. Brandon playing football. That's R. Now, if it said... Blan uh, Blandon. If it said Brandon plays football for the um, Colts, then we can say he's an athlete who gets paid because we know that if you're playing professional football for an NFL team, that you better be getting paid. I don't know any single professional football player who's doing it pro bono or for free. So if it said professional, or sorry, Brandon plays football for you know an NFL team. Then we could say P, and then we could have concluded that he was a professional athlete. All right, so now um, you'll be working on your practice on syllogism and detachment worksheet. That's through the Edmodo website. And then after that, if you're stuck on a couple of them, remember the ones with asterisks next to them are going to have a um, help video to go with it. Um, and then you're going to want to take your exit quiz. The exit quiz is going to be a little tedious. That means kind of uh, time consuming, takes takes patience kind of thing. Um, just because, remember up here where we did, uh, see, where we identified letters and all that stuff? You're going to have to do that in, a, in one of the questions. And you have to be exact. It's got to be P and Q and P and Q. Okay, so you really want to take your time on that. You don't want to have to take that quiz 10 to 15 times. All right, uh, good luck to you.